Give me uh, Matthew 15, 24. Christ, let's see who he came for. Because he, he was asked who he came for. And he's going to say the exact same thing. The book of Matthew, chapter 15 and verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sick, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So Christ said, I'm not sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And this was a woman from another nation trying to get a blessing off him. This is Christ now. She asked him a question, and he said, look, I ain't sent here but for Israel. Why are you talking to me? You understand that? But you know, we tell, we tell the Christians that, we tell Christianity with the destroyed mindset of America, they say, not my Jesus. Because you know what they're thinking about? They're thinking about this Jesus. And that's for sure not my Jesus. My Christ looked more like that. I'm not saying that's him right there, the, the, the black Christ, but that's more of a depiction than this man right here. You understand? So, now that I'm telling you a little bit, I, I don't want to talk all the time. Do you have a question? I had, a, I had been a raised Catholic. And at a very young age, I always ask questions. Good. And I don't know if you're familiar with catechism classes, CCD classes. They're classes that your mom and dad send you to when, on Wednesdays. Like Bible study or something? Bible something study? like that, yes. Yeah. So, and there's uh, groups of us all in the same grade. And I just remember asking the teacher, I asked her, it was just a general question about God. And she's like, you're not supposed to question God. Play with the Torah. Yeah. And, uh, and I just, it just, it doesn't, it doesn't matter where I go, it just, I keep getting these, like you said earlier, these callings, these signs. And so I just, anytime they pop up, I stop and ask. And that's why I was asking. Okay. Uh, that's why I was going by. So, yeah, and here recently though, but I found out about the Torah and, and, and it is confusing me. So I hope you can help me out. I'm uncertain about a Jesus. Here. I don't you're, know. You're confused about what? I, I am uncertain if there was actually a Jesus here. Okay. I still believe in the Most High. Uh -huh. I do believe. I still pray daily, but I'm just uncertain about a Jesus. So what about the Torah confused you? Is, is it that um? Give me Hebrews 10 real it, quick. It, it, it seemed like uh, there was some there was some points brought out where it was contradicted, where basically the New Testament is added words to the Holy. So, so in the Torah, in, the, in this conversation of the Torah, did it say that Christ wasn't in the Old Testament? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Okay, so, so let's see some. The book of Hebrews, chapter 10 and verse 7. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. You see that? So Christ is written in the volume of the book. This book is the spirit of Christ. That's right. This book is about Christ. You understand? Give me Deuteronomy 18. Even Moses himself, who wrote the Torah, he prophesied of the Messiah to come. You understand that? The, the, the Christ is throughout all the scripture. Here, let me, let me read that first. And I'm going to come back to, 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 uh, to show you how to even get more understanding on it. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18 and verse 15. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me. Unto him ye shall hearken. So Moses said, the Lord thy God is going to raise up a prophet. He's going to be like me. He's going to be a, a, a savior of sorts. But unto him you're going to hearken. You're not going to just follow the law of Moses no more. You understand that? Now we're gonna, you're gonna, sooner in the future, you're gonna go into a New Testament, you're gonna hearken unto Christ. Because when you go in the New Testament and you read about the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they were always about Moses. When Christ came, uh, uh, the majority of them wasn't feeling Christ. They were stuck on Moses. But Moses even prophesied, said unto him, you're gonna hearken to. Verse 16, according to all that thou desirest of them, the Lord thy God in Horeb, in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire any more, that I die not. And the Lord said unto me, They have well spoken that which is they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth. So he will put his words in his mouth, meaning Christ came to do what? To, to bring out the word, to expound on this whole Bible, uh, to expound this whole Bible more. Because when you go into the New Testament, they were doing all, they were divorcing women, 
uh, just for no reason. You understand that? They were committing, they weren't loving their brother as themselves. Uh, they were being hypocrites. Christ came to expound on everything, to uh, explain everything better. So that after Christ comes, there's no more excuse. You understand that, Ray? And he shall speak unto them all that I shall all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. So he, we have to speak of it in his name, which is what? When you read this, this is the word of God, right? That's Christ. Give me Revelation 19 real quick. Let's, let's keep on identifying Christ, going back and forth from the Old Testament to New. Because there's no contradictions there. You understand? There's just no understanding of the scriptures. 19 and 10. The book of Revelation. Chapter 19 and verse 12. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew. So it says his eyes were a flame of fire. When you read Revelation 1 and 14, this is given the same description as Christ. And it said on his head was many crowns. Why? Because he's the king of kings. Right? But he himself, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. So his name is called the Word of God. This is the Spirit of Christ. When, when, we're, when we're prophesying this, we're prophesying the testimony of Jesus. Go to Isaiah 53. Because Isaiah 53 gives the description of Christ. It's describing Christ and what he went through for us before it happened, right? The book of Isaiah, chapter 53 and verse 1. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? The arm of the Lord is Christ. He sits on the right hand of God, right? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. And as a root out of a dry ground, he hath no form nor comeliness. And when, he sh when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire of him. So it's saying that Christ, when he comes, he's going to look like a regular man. He's not going to be like an Idris Alba, uh, you know, whatever kind of man you think is, is a handsome man nowadays. He's not going to be like, he's going to be like a regular man, no beauty in him. Verse 3, he is despised and rejected of men. What does Christ despise and rejected of men? For what? For speaking the truth. For trying to get his, for trying to show love to his people and bring him back to the commandments of God. He was despised and rejected. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And he is hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Verse 5, no, verse 4, surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. That's what he come to do. He came to die for our sins, right? So he came to bore, to bore our sins, our griefs, our sorrow. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. How was he wounded for our transgressions? They, they, they crucified him, right? He was bruised for our iniquities, and chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. You see that? And with his stripes, we are healed. Now that he died for us, now we can come back. Now the adoption. is that now, now we have grace in him now to come back to him. But he did that for us. Give me Matthew 5 and 17 real quick. Give me Matthew 5 and 17. Let's get some more... Uh, New Testament Christ and Old Testament. How, what he was talked about, right? Matthew 5, 17. The book of Matthew, chapter 5 and verse 17. Think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. So he said, this is Christ talking. He said, don't think I came to destroy the law. That's what a lot of Christians think. He came to destroy laws and commandments. He said, don't think I can destroy the law. I didn't come to destroy, but I came to fulfill. All right, we're going to see what he came to fulfill real quick. The book of St. Luke, chapter 24 and verse 44. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses, in the prophets, 
and in the Psalms concerning me. So he came to fulfill what was in the law of Moses, in the Torah, and the prophets, which is, you know, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Hosea, Ezekiel, concerning him. Because they all talked about it. He came to fulfill those prophecies. When he got baptized by John, he fulfilled their prophecy. Go to Psalms 22. Is that what I want? Uh, 22 with, with the crucifixion? Go to Psalm 22. It's one of those two, Psalm 22 or 23. Because we're going to see if the, the crucifixion was uh, prophesied. You got it? All right. The book of Psalms, chapter 22 and verse 16. For dogs have come past me. Let's start at, um, let's start at 14. Because look, David and the Spirit of the Most High prophesied of Christ's death as if he was there dying himself. Verse 14, I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. Because they beat him so bad, his bones were out of joint. You understand that? My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. His heart is like wax. Why? I mean, my heart would be like wax too if I was crucified, looking at my own bones, all out of joint. Verse 15, my strength is dried up like a pot shirt, and my tongue cleaveth to my jaws, and thou hast brought me unto the dust of death. For dogs have come past me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and feet. They pierced my hands and feet, which is crucifixion, correct? Now remember, this is David. This is the Old Testament. They pierced my hands and my feet. I may tell all my bones. They look and stare upon me. So he was looking at his bones. You can see the flesh being ripped off by the cat and nine tails. All those little torture devices they used, his flesh was ripped off. He could see his own bones. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. So they part his garments among them. Now let's get that in the New Testament. So what scripture was that? That was Psalms 22, verse 16 and 17. Go to Matthew, I think it's 25, where that, that prophecy is completed. Because when we read in Matthew and Luke 24 and 44, remember we said that Christ said that he came to fulfill the prophecies concerning him. And there's still prophecies that still need to be completed, such as he has to come back to, to huh? 27. So now let's see where he, he took that prophecy. Yeah, right there, three. Let's see where, now that was the Old Testament. Now let's see where he, he uh, fulfilled that prophecy in the New. The book of Matthew, chapter 27, verse 27. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. So you, you know the story. They put on his crown and the, the gold. They made mocked him. They spit it. They made him walk down to, the, to, to do the whole procession to carry his own cross so, he, so they can hang him. Now jump down to 35. Verse 35. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled. That it might be what? Fulfilled. That it might be fulfilled. Which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. See that? So he fulfilled what the prophet said, which was David. You understand that? So Christ is in the volume of the book. Even he says it. he's the Alpha, he's the Omega. He's the Word made flesh. Give me that in John 1. He's the Word made flesh. He's been here since the beginning. He's going to be here way when, we're, when we're done with. You understand that? He's everywhere. So them saying that Christ is a myth or Christ wasn't in the Old Testament, he's just a character that's made up, it's false. And if you get caught up in that doctrine, you're going to find yourself put to death when he returns. Read. Uh, Say John 1 for the book of St. John, chapter 1, verse 14. And the Word was made flesh. The book of John, chapter 1, and verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. See that? 
all the word was that we definitely tell said in the beginning was the word understand that in the beginning was the word let's see what the word was go to 14 verse 14 and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the father you see that so the word was in the beginning it's prophesied and the word was made flesh Christ when he came and walked among us now he's back he's waiting for the most high to give him leave to come collect us to destroy this world but who are you going to be looking for when that when that sky cracks open who are you going to be looking for which Christ give me John 7 38 believe it's on me this is why it's important to know the, the actual image as well because we, us the people we think that it's a light thing to know what Christ looked like we get stupid answers like Christ didn't have an image Christ is everybody well he had to have an image if they put him on the cross they weren't talking to a rainbow you understand that yeah a ghost they, they weren't they weren't they didn't crucify a puff of smoke the book of St. John, chapter 7 and verse 38. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said. Read that again. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So you see what it said there? It says, he that believeth on me, as the scripture says. Why did he have to say that? Because he knew there was going to be other people coming to make people believe, as the scriptures don't say, out their own mind. Because only a fool would, after we show him exact scriptures of how Christ look, says, it doesn't matter. When every word in this Bible matters, or else it wouldn't be put in this Bible. You understand that? Let's get the true, defi the true depiction of Christ real quick for you. The book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 14. His head and his hands were white like wool. So his head and his hands were white like wool. The texture of his head, uh, the head on his hands and on his face were woolly. And it was white. As white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his eyes, the outside of his eyes were red. Why? Because Christ, he drank wine. A lot of times when you see uh, so-called black men drink wine or, or any type of drink, their eyes get pretty red. He had that same feature. Why? Because when you see Jew, when you think of Jew, Jew is just short for the tribe of Judah. That's the Christ. That, I mean, that's the tribe that Christ comes from. That's to who the so-called blacks descend from, the tribe of Judah. That's right. That's the real Jew. That's right. Read. Uh, that's why those over there in Israel, that's why they're called Jewish. That they're trying to be like Jews. Verse 15. And his feet like unto fine brass. Now his feet was like unto fine brass. If you took off your shoes and I looked at your feet, it's pretty much the same color as your whole body, right? So it says his feet was unto fine brass, which is brown. As if they burned in a furnace. But not only that, give me Revelation 2 and 18. Not only that. They were so brown, they were so dark, it was as they burned in a furnace. You understand that? Read. Revelation chapter 2, verse 18. And unto the angel of the church in Thetiria, write these things, saith the Son of God. So it was told to write these things, right? Why? So we can know what to look for. Who have his eyes like unto the flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. See that? It says again, he was the color of brass. And if you go even in the Old Testament, that's, as a matter of fact, give me that one too. That, that's Christ in the Old Testament. I don't know why I even went to that one at first. Give me Daniel. This, this, this is going to talk about Christ as well. And it's going to also show, um, it's going to show not just his feet, but also the color of his arms. The book of Daniel, chapter 10, verse 5. Then I lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of Uphaz. His body also was like the barrel. So it's talking about the clothing his head. He had a green garment on with a gold belt type thing like my brother's got 
on their purple garments. You see that? That's a girdle right here. And his face as the appearance of lightning. And his eyes as lips of fire. And his arms and his feet like in color to polish brass. You see that says arms and his feet was in color to polish brass. Meaning really dark brown. You understand that? Right? And the voice of his words like the voice of the multitude. Because Christ was a loud man. You understand that? Don't, don't pay attention to demons because they always come out sooner or later when the word of God is out. That's something we're already used to. You understand that? So that's another place where Christ is in the scriptures in the Old Testament, right? So it's important to realize who he is because we have to know what's what's coming. We have to believe on him as the scriptures has said. All right? So with that, give me Matthew 26. We're about to uh, head out. It's, it's time to go back to the school to congregate with our brothers. Did you get a flyer, right? You got a flyer, right? On that flyer is a website that answers a lot more questions. We have free classes there, seven days, uh, seven times a week, three times a day. Uh, we have YouTube channels in Spanish and English, Israel in Cristo, or Israel United Christ. We have a school here in Austin, just down the street. Can I talk to you? You understand that? So. The numbers are there, the address is there, brother. If you want more understanding, if you want to uh, elevate yourself now, because the Bible says the beginning of wisdom, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that keep the commandments. The only way you're going to get understanding the Bible is if you start keeping God's laws. That's what it says in Psalm 111 and 10. Does catfish has fins and scales? It has fins. But does it have scales? It doesn't have scales. So according to the Bible, it's unclean to you. You understand that? So these are the laws. You should take that and chunk it, brother. I will not. I'm Elder Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.